My name is Dave Mallows. Uh, I am a photographer and a retoucher. Um, I do a lot of music industry photography. I do a lot of product photography. I shoot weddings. I pretty much shoot anything that I have to. I have four children, a horse, dog, cat, and they all need feeding as well as my wife and myself. So pretty much shoot anything that pays. So today's session, what we're going to be looking at is the retouching workflow. A lot of the images that we're shooting don't need much doing to them. But other things that we shoot do need quite a lot of work doing to them. Some of them, not much work, others they do. So we're going to look in this session at just how I retouch and work with the images that I'm working with and show you some of the ways that you can use the tools from Lightroom, uh, Photoshop, or Camera Raw to further enhance and develop your pictures uh, to give you a result and a product that you're happy to give to your end client or to present to people yourself. Let me just go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to have a quick look at today is uh, selecting and masking. Selecting and masking, um, it's really, a lot of people get hung up on the whole idea of using layers and masks and they don't really understand the whole thing with masking. But there have been some enhancements recently with the latest version of uh, photograph uh, Photoshop CC 2018. And I'm just going to have a quick look at a couple of examples of some of the new tools within there that we can use to further work and work on our images. So I'm just going to take this image, which uh, is in Transnistria. And it's a pretty plain, boring image. There's not much, deep, much color in there. There's not much information in there. Um, it's, it's very bleak. It's the middle of winter. And you can see that it's a rather stark, uninteresting image. So what can we do to make something more interesting within this? Well, for me, there's a couple of issues with this image. Um, obviously, there are a lot of overhead cables. But I think the two that are at the very top left are a little bit distracting. I will remove those in Photoshop afterwards. I'm not going to do that in Camera Raw. That's one issue that I'm going to go on to. Next, I just think it would be a little bit more interesting if there was a bit more color in this image. So I'm just going to use a graduated filter and just zero my settings on there so it's not actually applying anything. And I'm just going to drag that down. And you can see here that I have the mask turned on so that I can see where this graduated filter is going and where it's applied. So what I'm going to do is just turn my mask off very quickly. And I'm going to just bring the exposure down a small amount. But I'm going to add some color into there. Uh, now I've adjusted the color temperature. But I'm actually also going to add a physical color into here and add some blue into it. The sky's looking a bit better, but you can see there's an obvious issue here going on with the buildings. Now, one of the new tools that we have at the bottom on the right here is the range mask. So we can tell that graduated filter to work within a very specific range. And there are two options here. One is color and the other is luminance. I'm going to use the luminance channel. And we'll just scroll up. You'll see that we have luminance range. Now I'm just going to bring the range up. I only want this to affect the highlights. I don't want it to affect the darker colors. So as I start to bring this slider up, what we should see is that it starts to knock out some of the building. And some of that building is now not being affected by that mask. So if I now go on the smoothness, if I hold down the Alt key, we can see very accurately the areas that are being covered or not covered as I move the slider up and down. We can determine where that mask is actually doing. So this is applying a physical mask to the graduated filter. So if I just come back to there, OK, it looks better than it was previously. So now at this point, I'm just going to bring the darkness down a touch more. It's still bleeding into if I just turn the mask on, the buildings very slightly. There are a couple of areas, I'll point with my keyboard, there are a couple of areas just up in the building up here where it's still being affected. It, that, that mask is not quite, because I put the smoothness quite high, the mask is not quite knocking out the building to the, uh, the extent that I would like it to do. So what I'm going to do is just say, I'm going to use the brush on the graduated filter. And I have a choice here of either adding to my mask or subtracting from the mask. So I'm going to tell it that I want to sub, uh, subtract. And all I'm going to do is turn on the auto mask, choose a fairly nice brush, nice size brush. And I'm just going to paint over those areas on that building 
where I think there may still be a very slight issue with the mask itself. So that just knocks that out for me entirely. And again, same thing, let's just go over on this statue and we'll just remove that. Okay. So number one, we've added a small amount of color into the sky. Being that little bit bleak, um, I think possibly that the, the red of that sign is a little bit overpowering for the image. So I need to knock the reds back as well. So I'm going to use the adjustment brush for that. I'm going to set that to auto mask. Well, in fact, no, let's not set it to auto mask. Let me just paint over. Now, because I didn't zero my selections or the local adjustments first, it's put the previous uh, adjustments that we did from the last one. So I'm just going to reset my local corrections there. And I'm just going to bring down the exposure and the saturation. Now, if I turn the mask on for this, you can see that I've bled across the edges. It wasn't very accurate. And it's actually just the red area of that image that I want to affect with the adjustment that I'm making. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of my panel here because we have these same range masking tools, only this time I'm going to set it to color. Now, I need to sample which color I want this mask to work within. So I'm going to pick up the eyedropper tool here on the right-hand side. And I'm just going to make a selection across those reds. And instantly, you see that mask reduced down to just the red area within that image. I'm going to just turn off the mask. And now I can control that element individually and just bring the whites down. Let's just take a little bit more exposure out of there. And that's nice. So I'm happy with that. What I'd like to see in this image for me, one final thing I'd like to see in here, is just a little bit more color in the hedgerows along the front. So I'm just going to add a new brush. So I'm just going to say new. Nice big brush. And I'm just going to paint. Now, again, it's just apply. I'm just going to increase the exposure and brighten that right up just so I can see where it is that I've painted. And just reduce my brush size down. Now, I'm being kind of haphazard in the way that I'm painted across there. I'm not being too accurate. I'm not trying to apply any clever selection with my painting there. But I'm going to use that same technique that we did just a minute ago with the color on the range mask. And I'm just going to select across that hedge. And if we have a look at the mask, you'll see that that mask now is pretty good to where I've just painted. Turn that mask off. Okay, so again, if I hold the Alt key on my PC, on my Mac, you can see I can adjust the color range of where that adjustment is going to affect. So let me just now bring that exposure down because that's not what I wanted to do. And I'm just actually going to add some green into the. I'm just adjusting the color tint of that image. A little bit of yellow just to warm that up a touch. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to make one final adjustment back in my basic settings. And then I'm just going to warm this up very slightly, the whole thing. And I'm ready. Let me just bring that down a touch. And I'm ready to open that and just take that into Photoshop to go and remove those lines. Looks quite different to how it did from when we started. Before I do that, I'm just going to go right down to the very bottom here. And I'm going to just change the workflow settings for Camera Raw. This is how it's going to interpret this image and open it up into Photoshop. So I'm just going to quickly look at that just so we can get these settings correct. I want it to go into the Adobe RGB working space as an 8-bit per channel image. I'm not going to do much heavy editing with this image going forwards. Um, not many big dramatic color changes or any composite imaging with this image. So I don't need it really to be in a 16-bit format. So I'm going to keep it as 8-bit. I'm not going to resize it. But I am going to tell it at the bottom there to open into Photoshop as a smart object. And now this will just open into Photoshop. OK, and there we have our image come in. This has had those adjustments applied. It's now open in Photoshop, ready for me to continue to work on. On the right-hand side, in my Layers palette, just on the, the thumbnail for this layer, you'll see that there's this little icon just at the bottom. And this denotes and tells me that this is a smart object. Now, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, well, actually, 
I wish I'd adjusted the highlight properties when I was in camera raw because I think maybe the, the building's a bit bright. Should have done that. Now, because it was a smart object, what I'm able to do is double click on that icon on my layers palette and that will bring this back into camera raw with those same adjustments. I still have the ability to go back. I can choose my adjustment brush. I can make changes to any of the edits that I've already done. But if we just go into basic here very quickly, I'm just going to bring the highlights down and maybe just bring the overall exposure down just a little bit. Lift my shadows a touch and say OK. And that will update my Photoshop document. So opening as a smart object is a non-destructive way of me being able to go and make further adjustments within Camera Raw if I feel I need to. So let's just have a quick look at how we can now remove these two cables. They're just odd because the others, there's some nice parallel lines they're running through and they work. I can, it's obvious. These ones, they're just some funny skewed angle. And for me, it's just a little bit distracting in that top corner of the image. So there are many different tools that we've got for removing. You could clone it. The problem with cloning was that I put that graduated filter. So there's going to be a shift in the color tone as it goes up through the top of the image. So to clone it would be quite difficult. We can use the spot healing tool, which in fact will work quite well for this. So we just go here, and we've got the spot healing tool. Now, it won't allow me to work on this image because it's a smart object. I can't use that tool on a smart object. So all I need to do, if I'm happy with the rest of the adjustments, is I'm going to control click there and just rasterize this layer. Now, you'll see it will allow me to just go ahead. Now, it's quite difficult. I'm using a Wacom pen, but it's quite difficult to draw a long straight line with a pen. Okay, it's maybe just easier with a mouse in this instance to do it because you're using your whole arm and not your fingers. So it didn't quite work for me that time. So I'm going to approach this very slightly from a different angle. I'm going to use the pen tool. It says. So I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm just going to put a very simple path. Now I've just missed very slightly. Let me just pick that up. Let me zoom in so I can see it nice and clearly. I'm just going to put a path along that cable. Now, if I go to my path palette, you'll see on the selections here, if I just hover above there, it says the second icon in there says stroke the path with a brush. So let me go and choose a brush. Now, I want to use, oh, sorry, just get there. It says. There we go, my brushes. There we go, the spot healing brush. Remember that same spot healing brush we were using before? Just needs to be slightly larger than the actual wire that I'm going to remove. And because I have that path, I can just tell that there to stroke that path with the brush. So what it did was stroke it with the spot healing brush. Much better than me trying to do it with my wibbly wobbly hat. So let's just go ahead. And if I go back to my pen tool, which is P on your keyboard. I'm just going to move that, use that same path, and this time I'm going to move it. Just move it slightly, just so it covers that other one. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Oh, go back to my spot healing brush. Bang, done. And then if I just click off the path, it goes, and those two have been removed. And because it's using that healing technology, uh, it's using content of where both the tonal range and the color range from that are going to match very accurately to the underlying image, despite the graduated filter that we put on there. So nice and easy. Really effective and quick, easy to, wait, to adjust your image. A couple of different things in Camera Raw and a quick edit, really quick edit there, just in Photoshop. So what else might we do? Let's have a look at this chat. So this was... Um, a really not very interesting picture at all for an event that I did at Heathrow Airport uh, called Race the Plane, where they have a whole load of cyclists who are racing a flight from JFK to Heathrow. And I like the idea of having the bus outside the hotel in the meeting place, uh, but it's you know shot with a very wide angle. There's some distortion on there. 
and that needs fixing for this image. So I'm just going to say, let's go straight into our transform tool. And if I just click on the full, OK, it does a nice job. Um, I'm going to lose a little bit of the image. What about if we just click? Let's just run through the options. So the first option is auto. It applies a balanced perspective. Level, so we can straighten it out with the level. We've got vertical, so we can use the vertical planes. And we have full, so we can correct the full aspect or perspective of this image, which actually is probably the nicest result. What I am seeing is that there's still a little bit of distortion, a little bit of barrel distortion going on from there. And we can just go ahead and we can affect that and just physically fix that if we need to. So we'll leave that as it is there. Let me just say OK to that. Let me constrain and bring my crop in. Let's bring it down a touch. OK, so I'm happy with my crop. Let's just go into my basic. Um, let's just make a couple of small adjustments, the highlights. Well, there's some cloud detail in there. We can pull some information out there. I'm just going to put some black in for a little bit of depth, increase, pull the shadows up. I'm going to use graduated filter again. And I'm just going to broaden that in, pull that sky down. And there, what are we going to do with that graduated filter? Let's turn the mask off. And let's bring the green tint up, put, put some blue in there. Darken it down a touch, bring the highlights down. So we're just putting a bit more color into that sky, making it a little bit more interesting. Of course, it's going over the building, so let's use our luminance mask and just bring that right up. Again, if I just bring, we can see where that's going to affect or not. So we see that's nice and clean on there. And I'm happy that's OK. So I'm just going to open that, and I think, OK, we've got this image. It's much nicer than it was previously. But the whole point of this image and the event was that they're racing a plane. That image needs a plane in it. So I'm just going to go and find a plane. I'm just going to open this. There's my plane coming over the hotel. So I'm just going to use the lasso tool and just take that plane. Use it straight to my move tool. I'm going to take that up. <laughs> he says, "Oh well, those." Let me just do it. while we're moving. I'll do. Demo Gremlin. There we go. Let me copy that and just go in and paste. There's my plane. Pop it up there. Now it's clearly got that horrible white sky behind it. What I want to do with that is just change the blending mode to darken. That was quick and easy. See that mask? That wasn't masking. That was just you changing the blending mode. So I told it to allow through anything underneath that was darker by saying darken. If I'd have said it the other way around, if we'd have do the polar opposite and do lighten, then in fact we get a cutout, we get a little cutout, and we're missing the plane. We're just bringing the sky through. So just there, we want to change that to darken, and now we have a much more interesting image for race the plane. There we have it, branded bus with a plane going overhead, coming over the hotel where they're setting off. So really quick and easy retouch for that. Okay, let's just go one more, selecting the masking. And we go and open this guy up. So here's just a simple product shot that we've done. And what we want to do is, I want to cut this out. They want to be able to use this with a clear background or change the background color. Now, I don't like it when clients do that to me when I've shot everything on a white background and then they say, can we put it on a color background? I just need to go into any one of my selection tools so here I'm using the elliptical marquee tool. And I'm just going to say select a mask. Now, one of the new things within the refine edge or the select a mask tool is that we have this ability to select subject. And the Adobe Sensei software or the intelligent, uh, the intelligent software within the Adobe products is going to analyze this image and try and select the subject for me without me having to do anything clever. So I just say select subject. 
and immediately we have this quite nice cutout of this, <laughs> this guy. So if we zoom in, you can see actually the cutout itself is rather nice. Let's just go and change that to onion skip. Uh, let me change that and just pop that on black. So the cutout itself has worked really nicely. But there are some issues here. He has a fur collar on, for goodness sakes. How am I going to cut out that white, white background within the fur and fix that? How are we going to do that? So how am I going to do that? Well, first off, I'm going to just refine the edge. And I'm just going to increase the radius by which it searches and analyzes the edge. This will get rid of a lot of the issues for me. And once we've done that, all I need to do, I'm going to zoom in. And <laughs> I'm going to just choose my Refine Edge tool. I'm just going to go around that edge, and let it analyze. And it will analyze. And it will start to create this mask that we can use to better cut out our image against that background. So the Refine Edge tool asks it to have a look against the background that it's been selected against. Here, we'll change it to black. And we let it work and do that. Now, it's much better. It looks like fur around the edges. It's much better than it was. Let's just have a black and white. And you can see the actual mask that's been created is down, literally down to a single hair level on the fur itself. OK, let's just change back to overlay so we can see that mask. Now, I'm going to, on the options here, say output to a new layer with a mask. But just above there, we've got this decontaminate colors option. And if I click on decontaminate colors, it reanalyzes that area that I asked it to refine. And it's looking to decontaminate, i.e. remove any background color within the mask. So if we just quickly now pop that back onto black and we have a look, you'll see that it's much cleaner than it was previously. We have a really nice clean fur cutout against that black background. OK, so open into a new layer with a layer mask and say OK. So now we have our cutout and it's nice and clean. I'm just going to put a new layer in there. I'm going to fill that layer with black just so I have this now against the black background. Now, me, I'm looking at that thinking I need to tidy this mask up because it's not perfect. There's some anomalies with this mask here, for example. It, it just doesn't look really, really natural to me. So I want to fix that. How can I fix that? I need to paint it in. How am I going to paint in fur? Well, it's a bit tricky. I could use a really, really tiny brush and do thousands of pen strokes, which will take us until about 4 o'clock this afternoon to finish our demonstration. Or I can look for a different way of doing that. So what I need to do is find a brush that's fur. So I'm going to just go up to my Creative Cloud desktop tool. I'm going to go to Assets and Marketplace. And I want to search. And I want to search for a fur brush. Search. Oh, look. Paint fur textures. Well, that looks all right. I think I'll download that. Um, I'll stick that in my brushes, in my libraries. So now this is physically downloading that from the marketplace and adding it into my Photoshop library. Syncing, tells me at the bottom that it's synchronizing. One file, one of one, 16 seconds left. The time's increasing instead of decreasing, which is always a bit of a worry. There we go. OK, so that's, that, this window's telling me it's done that. What that does now, if I go over to my libraries panel and to brushes, uh, where's our fur that we just got? Paint, fur, brush. Now, I might need to just have a quick look at the brush options. There's angles. So we can change the angle. As I change the angle, you'll see at the bottom that the fur changes angle. So let's have a look. Spacing. Well, I don't want the spacing too big. Let's just increase the size or decrease. So let's say I'm happy with that. I make sure that I'm actually clicked on the mask. Now, I'm set to white, which is going to take the mask away. If I set the brush to black, now this brush, I'm thinking, 
that's not actually doing the best job that it could do. I've, I think we could get a better result than that. So let me just go back in my history and undo that brush, because I think I've got a better brush for that. Now, I've got a hair texture brush here, and I've got a scatter brush. Let me have a look at my hair texture brush. Now, that looks a bit more like fur to me down at the bottom there. So I'm just going to adjust the angle of that. And let me go ahead and paint now with this. So just enables me, let me change the angle, that's where we're going on there. So I'm just using a hair brush to just scatter and tidy that edge and make it so it breaks it up. So actually, when you look at the left hand side compared to the right, you'll see that the fur actually has a much more natural feel to it against that dark background. So utilizing different types of brushes to be able to go in to do that. It's really quick and it's really easy. We've just got a couple more minutes, so let's go and have a look at some other things that we might want to retouch. So as I said, sometimes images don't need lots of things doing to them. Um, let's just have a quick look at this one very quickly. So I've been following our local um, trail hounds this season, um, and although they follow this fantastic trail. The whole thing about trail hunting is that it's steeped in this centuries-old tradition. The, the meats, everybody's there. There's hot sausage rolls and a glass of port. Um, and there's this wonderful atmosphere to all of these meetings. And the hounds are absolutely amazing. And the huntsman has complete control over those hounds in all instances, which is quite astounding to follow. So I've been following them and photographing them this year a lot. Uh, they're all begging me now to do a nice calendar for them. <laughs> So we'll see about that. Um, but let's have a look at how I might approach and edit one of these images. Now, I'm not going to do lots to this, um, but I quite like the aspect of then going off up this long drive, tree-lined drive. It's very autumnal. Um, but I want to draw the focus of this image all into the center. So first off, I'm going to crop this image. And let's just say I want to remove that little bit of dog hound that's on the right there, and that one, just the part one on the left. OK, I'm going to use a radial filter. Let me just go ahead and reset my local corrections on there. And let's just move that back down. Stretch it out touch. So here, what I'm doing is I'm darkening and pulling in around the edges. And uh, do I need to do anything else to that? I could remove some logs if I wanted to. I'm not that worried about that. I am just going to pull in a small graduated filter from the right and just darken that top right corner. And I'm going to do the same thing from the left and just darken that top left corner a bit more. And just say, bang, I'm done. I like this image. Um, I'm quite happy that, you know, with that, I might actually just crop a little bit more off the top. Uh, let me just go and change my aspect ratio. And let's just quit. OK, so we just say OK, OK to that. So I'm happy. I'm happy with this image. What I'd really like to do is just send this to a couple of friends of mine. It, well, Photoshop CC 2018 now has the function to share top right hand icon on the top of the screen there. Gives me the option to share the original or a smaller size. Well, let's say I want to do a smaller size. Um, and I want to, I'm going to just send, uh, let's send it via email. This will launch my email program. And who do I want to send that to? Let's send it to myself. Subject. Huntsman. And let's send it. Well, done. So I've sent that from Photoshop straight out to the mail client straight off. You can obviously send that directly to Facebook. You can send it in messages. You can also here, as long as I've saved this, let me just go ahead and save that. What do I want to save it as? Well, let's just pop it on the desktop and call that Huntsman. OK, once I've done that, I then have the ability also in its original file size to 
add it to Lightroom Photos. So I can send it directly from Photoshop back into Lightroom and that will also import into my Lightroom catalog and be available on all of my mobile devices that are synchronized using Photoshop and Lightroom CC. I'm going to stop there, um, but we do have time for a few questions. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, we're going to get a host with a microphone to come around. If you've got anything, there's a young man in the middle there who's itching. Um, we're going to get the microphone to you. So if you can just ask a question through the microphone so everybody can hear, and then I'll try and answer for you. At the beginning when you were, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, the smart objects, yes. what are the saving options within that? Well, the saving, you can save as a PSD, you can save as a TIFF. So let me just, let me just close that down. So here, this file is a smart object. Um, if I just do a file save as, you'll see the options are pretty much the same. Um, here, the problem that you have, some of these formats don't support layers. So I would need to save it as a PSD or a TIFF. If I were to save it as a JPEG, it would be a flattened version. So for support for smart objects would need to be PSD or TIFF. Especially if you're going back to it and you're going to work on it again, then you save it as a PSD probably. They're, both of those are lossless formats. You won't suffer with any loss of image quality with those.